you will, as I understand, show a short, uh, short movie as part of your presentation, and then afterwards you will have a presentation. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, welcome back from the coffee break. I'm Anna uh, from Portugal, from an NGO called Giota, and um... Olha, o teu... Experimenta o microfone. Experimenta o microfone. because together with the Balkans and the Italian cases as we've been seeing so far, there is also plans for new dams in Portugal, new hydropower projects. And those are majorly large, large dams. This is a map made in 2015 uh, and published in an article. And in blue, you can see the dots of dams that were under construction at that time. And in red, all the dams that were planned. And as you can see in the Iberian Peninsula, there is this large, large mass of, okay, so, of new dams planned. But what was, well, why did the government create and launch this plan in 2007, so more than 10 years ago? The point was to build 10 new large hydropower projects, okay, goal to reduce energy dependency and reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions, it seemed okay at the time, Concessions permits were paid before the environmental impact assessment to make sure the dams were okay and approved before any study. And uh, all the works were always considered of overriding public interest. So it was super important for Portugal to have all of these new large hydropower. What was wrong? Here you can see the map of Portugal. And the dots you can see are just from the, the large hydropower project. So it means that there are more or less 250 large hydropower uh, projects. Those already exist, but this map does not include the other ones. So the small, the mini, the, the, the small hydropower or any other infrastructure bearing the river. And no one wants to account them either. They just say it's more or less more than 7,000. Nevertheless, we, okay, we go for 10 new hydropower, new projects. No alternatives being studied anyway. So. That those were just for energy production, what about solar, energy efficiency, wind, no comparisons made. The cumulative impacts were never assessed, so what does, with all this map, and imagine there are 7,000 dots here, what will make new large pro projects that, uh, on the rivers will do, for instance, for sediment retention? And Portugal has serious problems concerning ero coastal erosion, and this will be, of course, one more, um, contributors to, 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 to retain all the sand that will not reach the beaches. It did not take into account the Water Framework Directive requirements, which, which was to, to, to avoid any further degradation unless it was extremely needed. So again, we don't know because there were no alternatives studied. And in the end, this was the energy contribution. 1.7% of national electricity production, which was equivalent to our calculations to 0.4% of energy. No accounts anyway as well for the barrier effects, instance for the Iberian wolf or the migrating fish species. And of course it affected as many of those dams were under the Doro. So and here I can show you all of these dams are all in tributaries of the Doro and the Doro has an important World Heritage site of the Doro Vinheteiro where the famous Porto wine is produced. That wasn't even taken into account. And the worst, or, well, the, the justification maybe we can find so far lacks in the lack of transparency. So the subsidies were attributed to all of these dams, although being uh, uh, sold as private investments. And there were also sent permits and given permits to these works with illegal expiracy dates. So this was all that was wrong with the plan, and this was why we were launched in 2007. We wanted to defend what was remaining of our last free-flowing rivers or stretches of rivers, and we wanted to do it with activism. And what does that mean, activism working? It took us a long time to find pro bono lawyers, to actually, after uh, engaging some 
um, lawsuits in the in the courts. And uh, to be honest, not many many results come from that. But the fact is that it raised the attention from the media to the problem. Something was not <coughs> fitting. Something was probably not legal. Lobby work, and here we need to take into attention the targeting decision makers and influencers. This was an action last year during the municipality elections in which we tried to, to, to convince the candidates to the municipalities that they, if elected, they should do something to protect their rivers from further degradation. Just two of them signed, here is one of them, and also through this campaign <coughs> engaging artists. This is Rodrigo Marant, uh, he done, he's done the soundtrack for Narco series. Activating directly affected people. Those dams are usually planned in places in which not many communities live or depend on, but in fact, this was not the case. Here you can see a couple of cities and some other villages, and what we do every year is that we try to engage these people into doing something that kind of awakens the communities and makes them discuss, makes them debate what is happening and demand answers from, from what will happen to their houses, to their roads, to their agriculture, to their vineyards productions. The same thing here, with protests with people that actually depend from the river, that leave the river every day. And one of, well, the first main campaign we developed was the first dam one that was being built, it started in 2011. And due to the affection of the World Heritage Site, an important site for the wine production of Porto, we engaged with the, well, the most known, well-known wine producers. And that came out with a communications campaign targeting UNESCO to try to make them stop and try to make them realize that they should not um, comply with the dam under uh, a World Heritage Site. This is just a trailer of the campaign that got more or less 23,000 signatures sent to UNESCO. São terras férteis e terras boas, vejo. É o que nos dá o, o velho pão dos três, né? para sobreviver. Temos um dos melhores vinhos brancos do mundo. Acho que é isso que também nos faz ter orgulho. Posso dizer que todas as vinhas que eu tenho é que está tudo cancelado para letrar. Que eu estou esperando. Ventura é um dos rios que temos experiências muito fortes. Possivelmente o maior centro de Portugal de esportes de montanha, tudo concentrado no mesmo lugar. E eles estão juntos. A barragem não nos vai trazer. A produção da barragem, por pesar das águas, vem a 5% do que se produz a nível de energia do país. Portanto, acho que não justificava fazer uma barragem para gastar tanto dinheiro. Ou seja, se quer a barragem, mais humildade, mais tratamentos, mais custos, mais caro bem ferro. A linha poderia ser uma razão forte para impedir que este vale fosse destruído. Eles pagam, pagam, está bem, pagam-nos o dinheiro, gasta-se. E o, o terreno fica, mas fica coberto de água, nunca mais o vejo. Quando o dinheiro manda, manda. Não são nós. Porque é diferente de nós termos sentimentos. Eu acho que sempre é fuga dos sentimentos. Sinto uh, revoltada com, com este tudo. Estas armas estão aqui. Sabes quem as plantou? Eu, os vários jovens aqui da minha aldeia. E é isto que nós temos que preservar. Porque é que o caminho foi tão facilmente seguido na distribuição de uma coisa com a potencialidade que tem poderia ser construído. construction and uh, the, well, the company decided to fill in with water as soon uh, as, as, as soon as possible so all the answers that we got was that it was just too late to do something 
uh, and that that was no problem because you know the landscape would not be degraded, and so it was just a, a small, more than one heat, 100 meters high uh, concrete wall right next to a World Heritage site. But nevertheless, it did awaken people for the fact that dams bring destruction, because in Portugal there is this feeling uh, that it is actually green infrastructure. It is one of our ways to actually fight climate change because we were uh, gathering water, because we were making us ourselves more resilient, that we are um, actually producing energy from renewable sources. But it's never talking about, it's, it's never discussed what actually brings to the people that directly live from the river and all of the consequences in the ecosystems. And uh, in these cases of all of these dams, it has huge consequences in terms of, the, of wine production as with the, the, this whole new water body, when the decrease of humidity, it, it costs a lot more money to treat all of the diseases that come along with that humidity. This, of course, together with all the campaigning and the lawsuits, it demands constant contact with the media and trying to engage them into this idea and actually training them uh, towards what actually are the impacts of them. And that depends from them to them, of course. Um, also, of, also, of course, the fact that every time that we do something in terms of, of lawsuits or every time we, get, we, we go one step ahead, uh, we're talking about these big companies and these big companies that come across uh, and sometimes they reach a point that in, in which we are now, they are being investigated for suspicions of corruption. <coughs> what else do we do? Well, exactly, education, raising awareness. This was actually two weeks ago while we were screening the Blue Heart film, which we will see in the meantime, uh, with more than 500 people that were watching, and we had the chance to actually debate what are the impacts of them, and the fact that, yes, also uh, uh, in other countries, we are, they are still being planned. There is still a tsunami. And this year, we launched a multidisciplinary platform uh, called Redor Vivo, as uh, all the dams now they are planned or under construction or under finalization are all tributaries of the Douro Basin. And so uh, we created a platform to do four things. To study and demonstrate alternatives to hydropower in terms of energy production. It's time to see that uh, we no longer need just hydropower. We have enough of hydropower. We still have a lot to go with solar and wind and energy efficiency. And we need calculations to prove that, to actually demonstrate uh, that it is possible and demonstrate to our decision makers. To promote the adaptation or removal of obsolete barriers in the basins. Um, and this is, is quite important as uh, many of the dams started constructions in the 40s and 50s decades. So they will come to an end uh, of their lifetime. To mitigate the impacts of necessary dams, some do are necessary, and so those need to be mitigated, for instance, with uh, concerning the fish migration, and something that has been discussed and will continue to be discussing in a few days, in the upcoming days, to create the free-flowing rivers, legal conservation statutes based on a map of no-go areas. So what is still remaining of free-flowing rivers or stretches ought to be protected. And we need to gather more than just ourselves, we gather with other NGOs, national, internationally, and also with research centers. So when they talk to colleges and universities that, that study law, that study economics, that study energy, and that study biodiversity, to actually help us all together to reach these results and to give the results to the public and demonstrate it is possible. So where did it took us so far in this last year? So a couple of victories. 2016, we got to cancel two of these hydropower projects, and we got also one to be suspended until next year. Um, in 2007, um, we, one of our lawsuits were actually um, continued, and is now in the criminal investigations for suspicions of corruption to everything that is related to the approval and the uh, licensing, and also the subsidies attributed to all of these new dams. And 2018, in May, in the launching of the Doro Vivo network, uh, it was announced publicly that there will be the first two dam removals in Portugal uh, coming. So, not sure when, but it, is, it will be the first time for, for us. And in 2019, we will need to stop Fridão, which will completely flood areas such as this, jeopardizing dozens of families that actually live nearby the river. Um, that businesses that depend directly from it, such as tourism, rafting, 
uh, everything that related to nature sports. And uh, also, also because this, all these places located into seismic uh, active places and thus uh, the, sometimes uh, accidents happen and some of us have already mentioned accidents that have happened and the risk is way too high because this dam will be six kilometers of stream, a city in which 50,000 people live. So this is the goal for coming.